Welcome to Star Cares, a weekly program that delves into the issues that impact you and your family. This program is a public affairs feature of this radio station. Now here's your host, Michael Leach. In this age of COVID-19, many have lost businesses, have been furloughed, laid off, downsized. And it seems that at some point in our lives, many of us will experience one or more of these instances. So how do we survive these times? How can we confront change? Let's talk about it. Our guest today is Boris Pendergrass. And among other things, he's been a software and technology professional for over 25 years and three times. His name has been on the layoff list. Boris Pendergrass, good morning and welcome to Star Cares. Good morning, Michael. How are you doing today? Um, Great. Thanks so much for being here. You've written a resource entitled Surviving Layoffs, Faith, Favor, Follow Through. What motivated this writing? I wrote the book a while back because I wanted to be able to share with people, help people. These changes can be challenging and people internalize them. And then as COVID hit this year, I really just sensed inside I needed to publish the book and make it available to the general public. You share that your name has been on the layoff list three times. What was the most shocking experience for you? Sure. I think my most shocking time was I was in preparation for a customer demo and presentation and my manager came in the day before for the dry run and she wasn't scheduled to come in because she had other things to handle. So she pulls me aside and says, Boris, your job doesn't exist anymore. Your name is on the layoff list and you have to find another job inside or outside of the company and you got 12 days. And by the way, will you still do the demonstration tomorrow? Like, wow. I think that was the most shocking one. Did you do it? Oh, well, you know, in the midst, so many things are going through your head. I'm upset. I'm angry. You know, I'm thinking about my own financial responsibilities, my kids, my mortgage. But in the midst of all of that, I can hear the Lord say, don't burn any bridges. So I told my manager, yes, I will do the demo. And we were in the middle of preparation. I told my team I need to take a one hour break and I just need to go walk and pray. Just get peace back. I didn't know where my next job was coming from, who God would use to help me. So I didn't burn any bridges and I did do the demo and they did buy the software. Don't burn any bridges. That's great advice. Now you mentioned that you were angry. What other emotions did you experience that? And, and how do you think all of these things impacted you as a person of faith? Oh, wow. I mean, I fight fear because we're people of faith and God has not given us a spirit of fear. So I'm always resisting fear. But, you know, there's concern. There's mortgages. I have my kids in private Christian school. And like so many Americans at that point, my savings wasn't what it should be. So it wasn't six months of emergency savings. So all those things are going through, through my head. But then also it's, hey, I need another job. So I'm thinking about, okay, Lord, this didn't take you by surprise. It took me by surprise, but I'm trusting God that he's going to provide, give me a new job and just order my steps to that next position. So it sounds like you were really almost in a battle right with your mind and your heart and knowing about God and knowing what God can do but still being human still dealing with the anxiety and stress how did you navigate through that with a battle plan sure so this definitely is that mental battle because I think so many people in general are negative pessimistic. Then you have these challenges that come. Jesus said in your life you have tribulations. So now the thoughts are coming, what if I don't get a job? You know, what if I can't pay my mortgage? What if I have to take my kids out of school? What if I have to relocate? What if I lose my home? All of those things. So for me, step one is like I told my teammates, I need to go out for a break. Now, I didn't tell them I was going to pray, but I was going to pray because my answer comes from the Lord. So that prayer time, you hear from God. He gives you peace. He brings things to your remembrance. He say, hey, these are the next action steps you need to take, Boris. Who to call, who not to call, how to put your resume together. So he kind of walks me through, and he walks all of us through these steps. And I come out of that time of prayer with peace. I have a promise and I have a plan about going forward that helps me, empowers me for the next step. And so really, before you get to the step of knowing and having that calm and peace and wisdom to take a step outside and seek the Lord, that really does mean that we have to be cultivating a healthy relationship prior. What are the ways in which you cultivate before you ever get in trouble? There should be some daily time of 
prayer, communication, sitting, listening. I'm always trying to spend my time reading the Bible, spending my time in the Word. Right? We go to a church, so there's encouragement, there's a body of believers. And I'd probably say at least, you know, maybe four days a week here, I am consistent with getting in my Word time. It should be every day. But it's those things that help develop just a relationship, knowing, you know, your Heavenly Father and just developing that confidence about that relationship. So then when change happens, because the book is really about, hey, change is going to happen. There's nothing we can do about it, but we can be prepared for it. Even more so when change happens, now you're really depending upon that relationship. And now there is no missing your your morning time with the Lord, your daily time with the Lord. Absolutely. And once you are prayed up, now action needs to kick in, right? And then you say the next step is really now you've got to have a plan. And that's the follow through. I mean, in in the situations like this, these are the people you need to call, people you work with who are VPs, directors, who have the ability to help you. These are people who feel good about you. These are recruiters who have relationships. Your skill sets, Boris, are applicable at these companies, these software. So that action that steps in place and follow through on that in faith, making the calls, submitting the resumes, doing the research, preparing for the interviews, leveraging those relationships. So yes, there is the action. And the faith is so important because if you don't have that faith, confidence, and peace, then you do it half-heartedly. You're not giving it your best. And people see that. So, yeah, the action combined with that faith and confidence in your relationship with the Lord. I love that you say when things happen and when change comes, prayer and planning will enable you to be like the special operations soldier who, when confronted with any situation, expects to overcome it. Talk about that expectation. Right When you first get the news, it's like deflating. But somewhere, somehow, there's this fortitude, there's this little thing inside of you that makes you hope and expect. Talk about that. So I am a father of three daughters and they're doing well. They're from 21 to 32. And they question me sometime on the military war paradigm that I use, or example that I use. But it feels like it's an attack against your life, against your provision for your family. And, you know, I have a desire to be prepared, right? The scripture all through has instances of be instant, in season, and out of season. It talks about your adversary, the devil, who roams about as a lion seeking to devour. So in you know, my mind, I'm thinking, hey, it's a war. And in a war, I want to be that soldier that's prepared. I mean, the scripture says that you are supposed to know your weapon and your word, right, as a soldier who rightly divides the word of truth. So my desire is to be that believer who, when change happens, when when tribulations happen, when the adversary comes, I can hear God give me directions, just like he gave David directions. I can hear him tell me what to do, where the enemy is coming from, and I'm prepared for that, so I can do the things in the spiritual that I need to do, and the things in the natural. And, you know, in my mind, that's that soldier, that special operations soldier who's trained and prepared, and it almost becomes second nature. So you mentioned your daughters. How did your relationship with your wife and your children influence, undergird the situation of you being laid off? My wife, Troy, she saved, loves the Lord. She was instrumental in me uh, coming to the Lord in college, and we've been married 34 years now. So one, I know my wife is praying. And then two, I know when these things happen, you know, she's going to be sensitive. She's going to be listening. Now, you know, hey, my spouse is under attack, so we need to be in agreement. You need to be maybe a little bit more tolerant, some patience there. So I know that's happening. And then, you know, just my children, you know, their kids, they love their parents. So they are loving, they're encouraging, and they're motivating me. So all those things are really valuable, important, right? If you don't have those good marital relationships, that's just another tool the enemy will use to distract you, to to hinder you, you know, prevent you from really walking in all that God has for you. The impacts of COVID-19 has also created opportunities for many people to do self-assessment and innovate and create other streams of income in ways that many may not have ever stepped out and done, except that we've had this pandemic. How are you encouraging people in that way, right? Because there's the layoff piece and that anxiety and that fear, but somehow they've been able to propel and they're doing really, really well, even in these times. Yeah, I'm encouraging people that Times of change are times of opportunity. And in the midst of that, just imagine delivering a need. People still need to eat. People need health care. Still people desire some form of entertainment, release. So there are all these opportunities. Companies now that can't do things in person are finding out ways to interact with their customers online, digitally. So 
there's always opportunities, and I think if we'll stop, if we'll pause for the believer, if we pray and ask God, he'll direct us and show us where are these times of opportunities. And then even if it's not revenue-generating opportunities, now these are opportunities for me to spend time with my family, work on my relationship, work with my family members, work on the things in my own heart that I need to, opportunities for you to, you know, meet your goals, take advantage of new jobs, businesses, and careers. That's what I'm encouraging people to look at these as opportunities and not just the change or the removal of something. Let's talk about the importance then of the company that we're keeping, especially in times like these, right? There's a section in your resource that talks about, you got to be mindful that misery does love company. One of the the firings was they let go the two highest paid members of the team. That was me and this other gentleman. You know, I'm focused on, okay, Lord, where are we going next? And when I talked to my coworker, he was upset. He was angry. We both had worked the longest for the company. He felt almost like portrayed and took it personally. I'm asking him, well, how are you going with your job search, right? We're a week in. I probably made 40, 50 plus calls. I got job opportunities come in and he's like, I haven't even started. So now he's just upset and wants to dump. And I'm like, you know, what I really can't I said this to myself I can't be here for you to dump all this anger offense unforgiveness that's dangerous so I pleasantly got off the phone but I realized hey that's not what I need to be thinking meditating on and then I think about family members you know who don't have the same relationship that I may have with the Lord they may not have the same knowledge of the industry or the same preparation or they don't have the same attitudes change so I have family members who and friends so I, I can't say anything to them because they're going to be, woe is me, oh my goodness, how are you doing? Are you going to lose your home? Are you going to lose your job? Are you going to have to relocate? So again, that fear and stress and anxiety. You really have to stop and think about who do I share this with? Who are my friends? Who can I go to battle with? Who will be supportive and encouraging? And really allow the Lord to show you that. Now, that's in the midst of time of change, but that's really an every day in your life, right? Hmm. Who are the people who are building you up versus tearing you down? Now, while we are encouraging people that these times of change can most definitely be the greatest opportunities in our lives, yet there may be someone who's listening to us right now who is really stuck in fear, maybe a little shocked, feeling traumatized with all of the stressors that we're facing in these days and times. Can you find some final words of encouragement that you would offer to someone that really, they hear us, but they need more support? What would you say? I guess the first thing I want to say is that God is real. There's a Father God who loves you and who's concerned about you and your family and everything that concerns you, your mental peace, your spiritual peace, your physical peace and wholeness. And God uses people. So in addition to that, there are people who who love you, are there to help you, and there to support you and give you what you need. So I would encourage you, one, spend that time praying, spend that time reading your Bible, spending that time listening to people, teachers, sermons, pastors that will be encouraging and lifting up. And then I would also say, take the time to reach out to those people who are truly your friends who are concerned about you, people who you are seeing who are having good success going through these challenges, and allow God to help you. And expect God to send you the help you need to provide for you and really to give you peace, to give you a promise, and to give you a plan. How can we learn more and how can we get a copy of your resource? The book is available on Amazon.com, Boris Pendergrass, Surviving Layoffs, Faith, Favor, and Follow Through. It's also available on my website, borispendergrass.com, borispendergrass.com. And just one other thing, what we're doing is we're bringing together subject matter experts and therapists and resources. We had a Christian counselor share about handling loss. He actually is a licensed Christian counselor. It was a powerful session that we had. And then we had a woman who spent 20 plus years as an HR recruiter. She's been on the side of the table firing people. She's been on the other side of the table where her husband has been fired multiple times. So just talking to her and, and getting information from her, those are some resources. The book is available, but those are the podcasts are free to enable you to handle change, challenges, and these times of layoffs. Boris, give us your website and info one more time. BorisPendergrass.com. And then if you go to Spotify or Apple Podcasts or YouTube, it's Surviving Layoffs Community Conversation. Surviving Layoffs Community Conversation. Boris Pendergrass, thank you so much for joining us today on Star Cares. Thank you, Michael. I really enjoyed this. Have a great day. And thank you for listening. Won't you join me again next Sunday morning, 6.45 a.m. for another edition of Star Cares. I'm Michael Leach, and I am praying that the rest of your day is wonderful. Star Cares is a public affairs feature of this station. 